Momentum. What is it? Today we're going to be discussing the differences in momentum, specifically linear momentum and angular momentum and the conservation of momentum. Inertia in motion. It's simply what momentum is. It's power or just energy. It's mass times velocity. Let's take a look at mass first of all. I'm sure everybody knows with experience, the more mass something has, the more it's going to take to stop that mass from moving. That means it has more momentum. Let's take for instance a truck speeding towards a brick wall. What's going to happen? It doesn't really have to go fast, but it's going to break through the wall. So let's take the bicycle with less mass, same velocity. What happened? It hit the wall and thus it didn't have enough momentum to go through the wall. So now we're going to look at velocity. Velocity is in fact intrinsic to mass as well. I mean, if you have more velocity, you don't need that much mass as they are quite proportional to each other. Let's take a bullet for instance, a shot through. It's going to travel through the pan, correct? Now, so anything that has mass and velocity has momentum. If you had to just take that bullet and throw it at the pan, it's definitely not going to go through the pan because it hasn't got enough velocity. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls? I am Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And on today's program, our special business is the subject of energy and momentum, two of the great immutable ideas of physics. And we must make clear their difference. So, for my purpose, I go to the two cars again. You remember what we have in earlier programs? A large, massive car on wheels and a smaller car, little m, on wheels. And they are on the tabletop and they are connected by a sort of elastic connection of rubber bands. Now when I pull them apart, I store some elastic energy in the stretch spring and there is a force then which is exerted on both cars. Now what did we learn before? We learned that the big car has a little acceleration and the little car a big acceleration because one and the same force acts on both cars. Now we also saw on another occasion that the little car acquired the greater velocity and the bigger car the lesser velocity and we call the product of M and V the momentum. And it is not unreasonable now to say that because the accelerations are inversely as the masses, the velocities are so, and therefore the momentum of the little car is equal to the momentum of the big car. So their moments are equal. But now watch, watch. Is it not true that the smaller car went the greater distance? That is, if I let them come from a place of rest and meet, they would meet somewhere in here. This is the distance the big car would go, and this is the distance the little car would go. So the little car goes the greater distance. S, little s. And now I define for you what is meant by work or energy in physics. The product of a force and a distance the product of a force and a distance. So, the same force acts on both cars, but for the big car, the distance is a little one, and for the little car, the distance is a big one. And these products are not equal. So we learn this astonishing thing, that although the forces are the same, the accelerations are inversely as the masses. The distances are inversely as the masses. The momenta are equal, but the energies are not. Very important idea. Consider this business of momentum. This gun is a toy, and so we need have no fear about it, but don't play with guns. Concerning momentum, if I shoot the gun holding it far from my shoulder, Will it not tick very severely and hurt me? 
Why? The mass of the gun recoils with a certain velocity, the M and the V, constituting a certain momentum. How do you avoid this kick? You hold the gun tightly against your shoulder so that when the gun recoils, you and the gun constitute a larger mass and therefore less recoil velocity. An excellent demonstration of momentum conservation. So there are two types of momentum, linear momentum and angular momentum. What are the differences? Well, it's quite simple. The linear momentum is like we were just discussing before, where it's keeping its linear motion. So, linear momentum. Linear momentum is defined as the product of the mass, which is m, of an object and the velocity v of the object. So in other words, you need mass and velocity to have momentum. So in other words, throwing a ball, going straight, it has momentum, mass and velocity. This is how it goes. Linear momentum. Angular momentum. A property characterizing the rotary inertia of an object or system of objects in motion about an axis that may or may not pass through the object or system. So, things to take into account. With angular momentum, you first need a rotary inertia, not a linear inertia. Also, it has to be with an axis. So this means the object in motion is about an axis and which follows that rotary inertia, which is angular momentum. Let's take the spinning table. You can see it's just turning and turning at the axis at a certain speed. What do you think is going to happen when we increase it? The tangential speed at a more increased radius has to spin faster. So it's keeping the angular momentum. This is a Hoberman sphere. You can expand it and contract it using this string. What I'm going to do is to use it to demonstrate the conservation of angular momentum. Uh, the axis, I'm going to rotate it about this vertical axis, and, and that axis is also denoted by the string that passes vertically through the sphere. We will um, note first that the moment of inertia in this, con this expanded configuration is much larger than the moment of inertia in this contracted configuration. So what we can expect is that if we give it some angular momentum in the expanded high moment of inertia um, configuration, and then we contract it, its angular speed should increase. And sure enough, it's one of the most uh, spectacular demonstrations, I think, of conservation of angular momentum. Demonstration of the conservation of angular momentum. I have a couple of, uh, looks like five pound dumbbells in my hands. I've got a platform that spins freely on its axis. I'm going to stand on this platform and then have my able assistant, David, come over and give me a spin. And then what I would like to do then at that point, I'm going to start with my arms out and then see how close I can bring the weight into my chest. Okay. <laughs> you can see my tie flying up. So, uh, ice skaters use this principle. They start off in going to their triple toe loop uh, with their arms far apart or away from their bodies. Then they bring their arms in close and their legs in close to their bodies so they spin fast. The reason is conservation of angular momentum. The axis through which they're spinning is vertical. The moment of inertia is bigger if there's more weight far from the axis. And as the moment of inertia decreases, the angular speed must increase. And that's conservation of angular momentum. Also to note that it is taking the path where it is the axis has the largest moment of inertia. 
So this would mean if you're on a spinning sphere, the equator would have the largest moment of inertia. So if you're going to follow that axis, that is where it is going to be the strongest. Following the momentum, you will see it's not going north or south. It's going from left to right, following the axis, the rotational axis. Has anyone noticed every time a person flies off, the momentum follows the path linear from the axis? That means they're following a straight linear path, not curving. So, if you would realize that if you're claiming conservation of angular momentum on the spinning sphere, the motion would be straight out from the axis.